My name is John Moriello. I'm a freelance industrial designer based in San Francisco and an adjunct professor at California College of the Arts. And today we're going to be looking at eyewear. We're gonna be looking at two prominent eyewear brands, People of Jamestown and Masunaga, and we're gonna kind of break down some of the decisions that they made and some of the design decisions that were made and why. So context is pretty fundamental to good design. And it's especially the case when you're designing an eyewear frame because you always have to consider how it's going to fit on somebody's face. So generally speaking, the more average a face looks, the more it's considered attractive. And what I mean by average in this context is how closely a specific face resembles the average or the majority of faces within a given population. A study was done by scientists where they blended multiple faces together to yield an average of about 20 faces. And these averaged out faces were strongly preferred over one individual face. So bringing this all back to eyewear, what this means is you basically want to highlight the good features in somebody's face and downplay the more negative one. So obviously not everyone cares about highlighting their best facial features, right? They don't really care about looking beautiful and that's great, more power to them. However, you still need to understand these basic principles if you want to design a good frame. So basically you need to understand the rules if you want to break them. It's much easier to kind of execute on a design in that way. And you're much more likely to be successful in designing sort of a weird or crazy frame if you understand why you're doing certain things or what each of these lines does in terms of the design. So let's look at this example here. Here we have a traditionally good looking woman wearing a frame that just does not fit. Once again, this model has traditionally good looking features so she can almost get away with wearing these glasses. But look at these frames on the right and see how much better they fit her. Let's look into why this is the case. The frame on the left is much too wide for her face. There's also a bit of thickness and width in the bridge area here, which brings a lot of attention to the center of her face and nose. These two things are making her look a little bit cross-eyed. Because the frame is so thick around the bridge, it's actually sort of framing her nose as well, making it look bigger than it actually is. The frame is also really square, which makes her jawline look boxier than it is, which is a typically more masculine feature. And the flat arch in the frame along the top completely clashes with her otherwise nicely sculpted eyebrows. This model has bright blue eyes, but the frames are actually taking attention away from them because the frames are too small in this vertical dimension. It's actually cramping her eyes visually. Lastly, the frame is really thick and opaque, so it's casting a very dark shadow on her cheeks, making it look like she has bags under her eyes or something. Now let's look at the frame on the right. This frame cuts in much more drastically on the sides, which accentuates and brings attention to a cheekbone structure, a more feminine feature. The top arch of the frame better fits the contour of her eyebrows, although they could probably afford to be a little bit more arched, but it's still a major improvement over the frame on the left. The frame is much thinner, which helps with getting rid of the shadows. Her eyes are generally in the center of the frame, creating some visual balance and preventing that cross-eyed look that we saw on the left. Lastly, this frame is a little bit deeper in this direction, which helps with giving her eyes and face a little bit more visual breathing room. It's worth mentioning that the frame on the left isn't necessarily a bad frame, it just isn't a good fit for this model's particular features. So now that we have a little bit of knowledge on fit, we can start to look at some other designs. Um, first of all, I just wanna say thank you very much to Veo Optics for actually lending these frames out to me. They're an eyewear store based in San Francisco they have some of the best and most knowledgeable opticians in the city, in my opinion. They really understand eyewear, optics, and fit. And they're not paying me to say this. I am just calling it as I see it. I could have borrowed frames from pretty much anyone else in the city. The first frame is by People of Jamestown. And I can sum up my interpretation of this brand's value proposition in one word. And that word is fit. This particular frame could probably fit 80% of the male population, and this is incredibly difficult to do with eyewear. So this frame's design is actually fairly minimal so that all of the emphasis is really put on the way that it fits, right? They didn't really add any other details or anything else. They wanted the emphasis to be on this silhouette, basically. Another really nice thing about these frames is the white and clear backing. If the frame was solid black, it would appear much more visually heavy. It also casts much more of a shadow on my face. So once again, all of these design decisions relate back to emphasizing good fit. 
Another really cool thing about these people of Jamestown frames is actually that they're really, really flexible. So I can bend these down a little bit and I can have that, uh, I can have it actually fit my jaw structure a little bit better when I put it back on. It kind of fits the brow line a little bit better. I mean, this isn't, this frame isn't a perfect fit for me in the first place, but that just kind of improves it. So well-trained opticians are able to kind of work with this material to get a lot of different expressions out of the frame and get it to fit a lot of different people just because it is so pliable and easy to bend. So once again, every single detail of this frame pretty much goes back to good fit. That's really what they're trying to drive home. That's really what they're trying to communicate with this frame. Now we can look at a little bit more of a detail-oriented frame. This frame is by Masunaga. This particular design was done in collaboration with a really world-renowned fashion designer named Kenzo Takada. And Masunaga was actually founded in 1905 in Japan. And their mission statement is, is this. I think it's really cool. We manufacture excellent eyeglasses. We want to make a profit if we can, but we don't hesitate to take a loss. It is always in our thoughts to manufacture excellent eyeglasses. So as you can probably tell from that mission statement, Masunaga is pretty fanatical about craftsmanship. So moving towards the examination of these Masunagas, I see a lot of precision, I see a lot of craftsmanship, and I see a really rich heritage and history in these frames. The frame silhouette looks to be loosely inspired by late 60s or early 70s era military aviator sunglasses. With these Masunagas, we see a strong element of craftsmanship and precision. There's also an emphasis on the brand's history in these details. For example, the designer Kenzo had his family emblem engraved into the frames. These small engravings are inspired by vintage 1920s and 1930s jewelry pieces, which further highlights Masunaga's long-standing heritage in the industry. So this metal engraving wraps around the entire rim of the frame, along the front of the bridge and top bar, as well as along the sides of the temples. The metal wrapping gives the frame structure and strength. If the frame had just been plastic or acetate, it would not have felt as luxurious or high-end. Precisely applied details always communicate luxury. The details are so fine and delicately done that it never becomes overpowering in spite of it being all over the frame. If they had made this a brighter gold or silver color, it would have given the frame a much more blingy and opulent character. The dark titanium metal color is very understated and elegant. Another thing that's really cool is that this entire front rim and temples are held together by only two screws underneath the temple pieces, which really highlights the elegant simplicity of these frames. There's no excess of material or structure. So another really nice thing that I noticed about these frames is just the impeccable details and the dedication to craft and really making a frame that lasts a long time. One thing that's probably worth noting is that these frames are made of titanium. The metal part is made of titanium. So it's incredibly difficult to work with. It's really difficult to bend when compared to stainless steel, for example. But they chose to go with this material because they knew that it was something that would last. And they kind of prioritized the durability and the lasting nature of these frames over ease of manufacturability, which is something that's really impressive. A great example of craftsmanship is where the top bar meets the rest of the metal rim of the frame right here. The parting line here is almost completely invisible. The manufacturers went through a painstaking process of making sure that these two pieces fit together perfectly, and this just really shows the dedication to precision and craftsmanship. So that pretty much sums it up, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please feel free to leave a like and subscribe. And if there are other kind of product categories or another product that you'd want me to check out, definitely mention it in the comments. Thanks a lot.